One of the first and most immediate effects of an eruption is ashfall. Ash clouds can stretch for miles, blanketing towns, roads, and farmland in a thick layer of volcanic debris. Depending on the size of the eruption, cleanup operations can take days or even weeks to begin. In some cases, such as the 2014 Holoran eruption, toxic gases like sulfur dioxide can be released causing long-term air quality problems for nearby residents. Lava continues to flow from the volcano in southwest Iceland. If it continues like this, Rindavik is not in danger, geophysicist Magnus Tuma Gudmundsen said after flying over the eruption. Of course, we don't know what will happen in the near future. But it's very possible that the volcano has peaked and will then begin to subside like other eruptions. The Department of Civil Protection and Emergency Management activated its response center an hour before the eruption in response to increased seismic activity indicating magma moving beneath the surface. Collecting lava is a unique endeavor. While it involves handling dangerously hot material that's erupting from the Earth's interior, it's not a high-tech endeavor. The heavy-duty lava harvesting equipment usually consists of simple pebbles. To get a decent sample, scientists stick the gardening tools into the thick liquid. Doing so feels strange because lava isn't a normal liquid. It's much thicker, says Alberto Caracciolo, a volcanologist and geochemist at the University of Iceland. It's a bit like honey, or maybe more like the consistency of marshmallows. The point of all this lava sampling is to keep people out of harm's way. The eruptions on the peninsula aren't coming from pre-existing volcanoes, but from hidden fissures that can pop up anywhere they like. And the remains of other ancient volcanoes across Iceland mean that much of Reykjanes is potentially at risk. Because the shifting magma has caused the ground above it to expand, contract, vibrate, and shake, scientists have tracked its underground migration with remarkable precision. As a result, authorities have managed to rescue everyone before each new eruption begins and have built ad hoc walls to divert lava away from infrastructure. The gas has been passing high above the UK in recent days and has now passed over the UK, the Met Office has confirmed. The gas, which can also be produced by burning coal and oil, can cause sore throats, eye irritation, or flu-like symptoms. Prolonged direct exposure has been linked to more serious health problems. The SO2 layer triggered by an eruption near Grindavik on Thursday began blanketing the country at around 4 a.m. on Sunday, but forecasters said air pollution levels remained low. The Met Office confirmed on Tuesday that sulfur dioxide was having little impact on air quality at ground level. A spokesperson told the standard only small concentrations at ground level mean air pollution levels remain low. Air pollution is currently low and is expected to remain so across the UK today. We continue to collect sulfur dioxide emissions from Iceland, with current estimates suggesting a small impact on UK surface air pollution in the coming days. Air pollution levels are likely to remain low in the coming days, although warmer weather in eastern England on Wednesday may cause some people to experience air pollution levels, although this is not related to sulfur dioxide from Iceland. 